We are in Geneva. Before we get to the auction previews, I wanted to swing by a few of my favorite vintage watch shops in Geneva to see what they have in stock. One you guys have undoubtedly seen in the videos before at the Davidoff Brothers. This one you might not have, my good friends over at the Ponty Collection. Let's go take a look. We are here at the Pawnee Collection in Old Town, Geneva. It is a father-son duo who have been in business a very long time, curating some of the best vintage and modern watches in the heart of Geneva. Let's go take a look and see what they have in store today. Stan, Stan. good to see you, brother. Good to see you, too. Dude, I love your shop. Every time I come here, I'm like, this is what a proper shop should look like. So before we get to the watches, give uh, my audience here a quick breakdown who you guys are, and then I want to see a little tour, maybe check out your watchmaker. Yeah, sure. Ask them to fix something. So we are Ponty Collection in Geneva. Uh, we opened in 2001. My father, I joined him in 2017. Uh, I worked a bit uh, in the US in uh, some auction houses before, and uh, yeah, we moved in this place Two years ago, we had a small shop before in the city center. Okay. And uh, we have a watchmaker. Uh, I'd be happy to give you guys a yeah, tour. Yeah, give us, give us a tour. This place is such a yeah. beautiful shop. So, come with me. This I, is... I, I like to joke with uh, Sasha Davidoff that this is what he needs to model his score <laughs> after. <laughs> so, a very important, the bar here on your left with the, everything you need. It's too early for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Watches. So, two displays of uh, Rolex. Yeah. AP, Patek, uh, Journe. Um, a so bit you, of everything here. So you guys do not just vintage, you do modern as well. We, we do we do a bit of modern because right. like this is what the market asks. Right. Uh, but we prefer of course vintage. Right. And uh, we what have, would you say the breakdown is like 50 50? Um, I would say 60 40 probably 60% uh, of vintage. Okay. So let's head. Uh, this is so where we receive the customers. We have our office there with Sasha and my father uh, having a coffee. This is the place we take care of the watches. Wow. So yeah, very nice. We are very uh, happy to have a watchmaker working with us. His name is Pascal, he's half Japanese and he worked 30 years for Rolex. Wow. Yeah, so yeah, I, I've been searching for an in-house watchmaker for the better part of a decade now. It is so hard to find it, it competent good people. Extremely hard to, yeah. to find someone good. Yeah, we literally have five different watchmakers spread out throughout Miami that we use, depending on if it's a Perpetual, if it's a Chronograph, if it's a Submariner. Uh, we have different watchmakers for different watches. It's very hard to find somebody who uh, can do everything. Yeah, I know yeah. the situation. And uh, we're very happy because in-house, it's. It's changing your life. Now, do you guys service watches like for customers or of course, only your own yeah, watches? Yeah, okay. we polish, restore, service, everything for yeah. the customers for our watches. So not just watches, guys. If you're ever in Switzerland and you need a watch service or polished, hit up the Ponty Collection. But let's make a, an appointment and come see them because we got to go check out these watches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you have, I see a lot of stuff here. I don't want to keep you here all day. Everybody's busy. It's Geneva Watch Week or Watch Auction Week. Pick out three or four of your favorite yeah, watches sure. that you have in stock right now, stuff that you really like, and tell us a little bit about them. So here we have a very special Patek, 1959. You my probably favorites. know. One of my favorites. The Gilbert Albert. Yeah. Whoa! Super, super nice condition. Yeah, Original so owner. Reference 3424. 59. And this watch is very particular because it has this very champagne dial. You usually see like a white or silver dial. And just look at the condition of the dial, uh, the case. No, this is, that has to be one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. This is absolutely stunning. And this is one of the most desirable watches on the market right now. It is. It's so hard to buy, so yeah. hard to find, especially nice ones. Uh, it's a, a really, for me, a true sign of the times that people are looking for something different, maybe a little more art deco, funky, uh, kind of thinking outside the Absolutely, box yeah. than, than the normal watch mold because this case, you know, screams like I have a little bit of style, yeah. taste, yeah. And, and I'm different, you know? Because yeah. only like true watch lovers are going to understand yeah. this watch and understand how special it is. Fantastic piece. Absolutely fantastic. Love it. What else we have? Uh, very, very nice. 6 to 40 Daytona. Okay. Also from the original owner. The story is this gentleman received this watch for his 20th birthday in 1967. And this is the original invoice of the watch. His mother was working for Rolex, so it comes directly from the factory. Wow. She got at the time 50%, so the price is 333 Swiss francs and everything is signed by Rolex. Do you and know what the conversion of 333 Swiss francs was in 1967? More or less. I think it's, today it's like 1,000 Swiss francs. Wow, yeah. okay. 
Yeah. So look it's, at, it's, it's nothing. Yeah, another watch in spectacular condition. And I, I'm very fond of the 6240s because this is like the genesis of the Daytona. Well, it the is. screw down pusher yeah, Daytona. Yeah. To the way Daytonas are still made today with screw down pushers, you know, black ceramic bezel on the newer models. And fantastic condition. Really, really beautiful yeah. watch. Look at the dial. Super nice. 1967, yeah. still, yeah. still crisp. They're well, still out there, people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. And I love your display of Daytona. Thank here. you. You know, one of everything. So if you guys are looking and you're in Geneva for something pump pusher, something gold, something screw down, uh, looks like they have <laughs> one of everything. <laughs> yeah. And here, we have, we a, have the Atomar, Atomar case. Atomar <laughs> case. We have a bit of everything as well. Perpetual jumbos. So let's pick this beautiful C serial One jumbo. One of my favorite watches of all time. Absolutely. Also crisp condition, all original with the certificates. The watch dates from 79. All original, super nice dial, hands, bracelet, no stretch, like super, super nice. Yeah, very nice condition. It seems like you guys only are curating super nice watches. We're here. trying to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah, I get it. It's, it's with vintage, you know, people like are like, oh, well, uh, how do you find this stuff? And, you know, why is there so few options? I'm like, well, because we pass on dozens of watches yeah. before we say, okay, we'll buy that yeah. one and try to only buy the best stuff. Yeah, uh, especially on those ones, you know, yeah. the market and uh, the for good me, ones are very hard to find. Yeah, for me, this is the best of Genta's designs. Like I love Royal Oaks more than, yeah. there we go, than the <laughs> Nautilus. Uh, this one's excellent because usually there's like peeling on these yeah. dials and this one seems to be perfect. Yeah. Original one signed crown, yeah. really fantastic watch. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, what else do we have in store? I see a uh, Comex, tell yeah. us a little bit about that. So, very special Comex. Triple six comet matte dial for those who knows. Very, very, very special watch. I think they made like around 50 of them. It's just been serviced at Rolex Geneva. Right. It has the factory stickers. I was literally point, about to point out the yeah, easiest yeah. way to know yeah. that Rolex has just serviced a yeah. watch and polishes. Yeah. They still leave these stickers on them. Yeah. And uh, very clean dial, very important watch. Right. Original. Yeah, I mean, Comex watches for me have always been special because Rolex did so few, I guess we could call them yep. collaborations. Yep. I think Comex was one of the only companies yep. that they like agreed yep. to contract with and make yep. watches for. So finding them, and, and they were used. They were used, they were sold to Comex to be yep. used as dive watches in their operations. And a lot of them are truly very beat up and, and, and not in great condition still. This one looks to be absolutely fantastic. And being just serviced by Rolex is always a benefit, uh, assuming they didn't replace anything, which it doesn't yeah. look like they did. Uh, did you have a service by them? Yes, do we do. Do you mind if I ask, like, were they, were you able to like decline certain Absolutely. things? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I'm always still scared to send stuff to Rolex. I've heard no, so they, many they, horror they, stories. They, no, know? no, nowadays it's very different. And uh, actually for the service, we go directly to the factory. Right. Uh, not a lot of people know that you can go directly to the factory. There is a watchmaker paid to be here every day. Okay. There is absolutely no one <laughs> who come there. Right. And uh, yeah, it does like a very precise quotation and you just tick what you want to uh, replace on it. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah, because yeah. I've warned uh, our audience before, like be very, very careful because I've had stories, I've had clients that have sent a watch to Rolex yeah decline like for example they want to replace the hands yeah. and they, even though they decline it they still do it anyways Rolex okay. just chooses themselves so no, uh, not, not in Geneva okay to be honest. Yeah. so maybe uh, if you want to get your watch searched by Rolex yeah. come and drop it off in person <laughs> in Geneva and point, look them in the eye and say I do not want anything yeah. replaced uh, fantastic watch you guys have some incredible watches here congrats on your amazing thank you. store thank you so much guys like I said if you are in Geneva absolutely make an appointment go on their website come see Stan fantastic fantastic store some fantastic watches and grab a drink while you're here because they got a nice bar it looks sure. like awesome dude thank you so much thank you thank you for coming for our next stop we're back at one of the staples of the vintage watch scene here in Geneva the Davidoff brothers let's take a look at what they have in store for us today Bonsoir. <laughs> hey Adam, how are you? Good to see you brother. You too. Mr. Davidoff, thank you for pulling out some watches for us to take a look at. It seems like we have some new stuff since we last visited with your brother in November. Take us through, what do we got in store today to show our viewers? So we're going to start with a watch that I've been talking about a lot the last few days, especially with auction season. You see a lot of these patina, a lot of these old gold, uh, because here you can see this yellow gold date model. It's a 15038, which is from 1989. It was uh, given for 30 years of service for uh, Alitalia. And the gold is like orangey. 
Wow. It's super cool. And it comes with the original papers, everything matches. And you can see this is truly untouched condition from the day it was uh, delivered. Were these like the Chevron or GM or exactly. Domino's with the Alitalia written on the papers? Yes, uh, oh. not Alitalia written on the papers, but there's, there's a bunch, all the same look, all the same range, all different names that have, that have been seen. But I, this is probably the nicest looking one because it's... Not I mean, really mirror, that. you can see the mirror polish and the gold color is crazy. And also, though, I'm holding it. This is the original strap and buckle. Like, 100%. You can feel it. This is a, it's and the it, creases in it. And uh, it mentions uh, an Italian leather on the oh, papers. Oh, wow. What a yeah. special watch. Very cool. I didn't even know that All Italia was giving out gifts to their employees. You know, you don't know until you see it, like as a case back engraving. We just like found out. Yeah. And then you see there's a bunch of other ones on the net, but I... Again, this is probably the nicest one I've ever seen. Yeah, the condition's absolutely spectacular. Very cool watch. What do we have next? Next is a watch I picked up uh, one of my last trips when I was in Asia. Again, you can see it aged with the gold, but you can see where it rubbed off. So, you, so it has darker areas and then lighter areas, and it's an unpolished case. This is also a very cool uh, Vacheron automatic, center seconds, date, and strong case, oversized bezel, all the things you want to hear about uh, these type of wristwatches. Wow, absolutely stunning condition. Yeah, and I love when these gold cases tarnish. And, and it's weird because sometimes you'll get maybe a newer buyer and they're like, oh, can you polish it so that tarnish is removed so it doesn't look like it's rusted? And I'm like, are you sure you want to do that? I just tell them, I just tell, straight up, I tell them this is not possible. Right. <laughs> Yeah, because you could even see the rosy patina in between the facets of the screwback case. That didn't wow. rub off with the skin. Incredible watch. Very beautiful. Uh, and, and, and I love these watches also because it's a dress watch, but it's approachable. The price point is right there where you're sub, not sub spending... Sub $10,000. Yeah, you're not spending a fortune, but you're getting a Vacheron Constantine like... Uh, one of the pinnacles of you know Geneva Swiss watchmaking, vintage. Geneva seal on the movements. Uh, yeah, you're getting everything in such a great package for such a bargain of a price, in my opinion. Hundred percent. Super watch, very cool. Going down the line, one of my favorite chronographs. I can already see out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> Tell us about this one. So this was delivered to South America in the 40s. It's a 13ZN with uh, everything original, the, the case, the dial. It's in pristine condition with this, I wouldn't call it an empire case, but it's, uh, it's quite nice because it's a smooth side. But I like this, this block case uh, finish with this highly legible uh, contrast between the dial and the hands and the, the split lugs, which is a really, really cool little feature. I was waiting for you to bring that up. That yeah, is no, wild, yeah, absolutely yeah. wild. And for me, I absolutely adore pulsation styles. This is a dial for a Longini with Art Deco numerals that you never see. Two-tone also, because, you know, the inner circle uh, has like, silver, yeah. silver, right. As like, you know, depending on what angle you look at it, the colors kind of change. Nobody makes watches like this anymore. As I, I was incredible pulsation scale, two pulsation scale. We saw at Antiquorum the 1463 yeah. with the two tone dial, mm -hmm. and I was comparing it to a brand that did a revival of that watch, uh, Roger Dubuis. Okay. And I explained that the dial looked flatter right. because there's no contrast. Okay. Yeah. It's all the same from the center to the edge, and I believe that if they had done this two tone contrast, it would have better dressed the dial. Right. Yeah, but this is absolutely a very rare variant. You almost never see this dial, pulsations and respirations. In, it's in condition also is, I mean, it's fantastic. for a non-waterproof case. It's yeah. a fantastic And what condition. country was it delivered to? Do you remember? Argentina. 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 Yeah. Argentina, yeah. I mean, it's wild. And so many great watches come out of South America. They honestly had such great taste in the 50s, 60s, 70s for the watches they bought and the watches that I've been able to you know, uh, you suck out of Argentina and Brazil and Colombia. There's so, there was incredible watches delivered to those countries. South America was one of the biggest markets for the entire watch industry. I mean, you have the name Gondolo, all the fancy shaped padded cases that come from there. They made even bracelets uh, were made there for, for, for big brands, JM bracelets. No other country in the world, no other region in the world is so rich with history when it comes to uh, Swiss wristwatches. And even the little detail, you can see the bottom of the dial, it says Suiza and not Swiss. Yeah, yeah. So it matches a Spanish uh, country delivery. Well, we should have saved this thing. It's probably going to be my favorite, but I see some other incredible <laughs> watches. Walk us through what we have next. So this is a, I would call it a bit of an oddball in our collection, is that it's a two-line racing. I usually prefer the three-line racings, and it matches more with the professional case. But this is a lovely two-line racing 
which has some oddest odd features for the for the period right. is that it still has the omega overlow the loom is not present at all 12 indices there is basically four of them which are loomless 12 3, 6, 9. exactly yeah. and it's uh it's a really cool racing dial uh and a really nice case from back in the day and these are uh you know uh, quite rare i think um the three line, there's like a dozen known, and I think the two line is maybe a bit more known. Right. But uh, these are really, really rare timepieces. And to find them, you know, today, still in this level of condition, because a lot of these dials were mishandled and didn't age properly. So to find them in this nice of a condition is quite rare. Right. Uh, there's always something to be said about a racing dial for me because the 1967 the watch, the colors, they yeah. just pop. You know, there's history there, there's provenance, there was a reason behind them. And, you know, is a reason that Omega reintroduced the watch and then has, has redone them a couple times now. So this is the closest, this in the three-line version, the Red Racing, is the closest one to the nickname one, Tintin. Right. Which was basically the white and blue hash marks around the dial. Yeah. And, like, they just really didn't do any other interesting dials in the era, you know, with colors. Uh, but was... this was, so they have the Gray Racing, which is right. the third racing, right. which was the one that was the most produced that even became a standard in the Mark II mm -hmm. and was also the basis for the, the Japanese re-edition from 2004 where they made the Japan Racing. So are the red racing ones considered the most rare out of all of the racing yes. variants? For, for me, the three line is the rarest. Mm -hmm. This is the second rarest followed by the gray. But we always, rarity is one thing, but the most demanded is still the gray mm -hmm. because it's a bit more affordable. Right. And it pops even more. Right. The yeah, contrast I mean, listen, is even more there. That's what's great, though, is it's subjective. And if you like that color scheme, you know, better, then then, then you go for it. And if you can get it cheaper than getting the rare red racing, yeah. but even this better. Is, but this is priced <laughs> quite uh, aggressively, so we're, we're, we, we don't think we're going to hold it too long. Well, before we jump to your last two watches, I haven't even shown you this. I picked this up uh, in my trip in London right before I came here. I think you are the guys to appreciate it. 2915-3 in some of the nicest conditions I've ever seen on a watch. So it's actually funny you're showing me this now because you'll see it has the same overlow on the print as this and the positioning and some of the details are going to be very similar Right. because I believe that it was the same templates that was used for both dials. Right. So same this, cliche. Same cliche, yes. Right. For the center, for the center printing. That's why the the S and the O of Omega are very similar. Right. Uh, which kind of anachronic for a watch of the late sixties, but these dials didn't exist before. Sure. Yours is quite spectacular. The base one thousand is incredible. Perfect. Yeah. I can see with my naked eye the dash and the back of the at the case at twelve o'clock. Have you ever noticed this? No, I've never noticed that. Right there. If you see the dash. You know that oh, yeah, this wow. only belonged in 2915-3, 2981, and 2. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I picked this up from a dealer who resides in London, but is originally from South Africa, and he has the original plane ticket from when he flew to pick this up from the original owner. Oh, and, wow. and I believe the story because, you know, first of all, he's got no reason to lie. He told me what he paid for it a decade ago. <laughs> he's been holding on to it for quite some time, and I was able to get it out of his collection. And the second detail is that you can see sometimes, because sometimes his bezels were worn out and were exchanged, but you will see on the bezel at the 60 mark, you will also see a second dash. And that's why the dash and the case is there. Wow. Just to align the bezels. And they're like aligned up perfectly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Look at that. Thanks for taking a look. I'm glad it gets your stamp of approval. <laughs> uh, like that like makes me so happy. Like I didn't mess up. Oh God, with the Speedmaster. Uh, you see, I see two more watches out here. One I'm very fond of. So that is the next watch you have out for us. Please tell us a little bit about it. So I have a particular love for the Star Wheel. Yes for the fact that the first one I saw was in the late 90s. Okay. Apparently, either belonged to the Swiss ambassador to America or the American ambassador to Switzerland that actually came into my hand. It was a white metal one mm -hmm. uh, with an engine turned wow. dial. The, the look of the watch for me is, is something that uh, Armar was able to perfectly harness from what was developed centuries before that you can see at the Patek Philippe Museum, if you go. It's a quite different variations of the star wheel. Of, it's not really a jumping hour. It's really the star wheel because uh, as the hours goes through, the next hour pre-jumps. Right. And then it will perfectly sync up with a little arrow. And even AP today uh, has relaunched this exact uh, complication with some 
minor improvements, mm -hmm. which aesthetically isn't really what I what I love. Well, they have it in a larger code case, yes. you know, they the do center that blue Aventurine dial. It's a gorgeous look, but for it's me... It's probably the nicest code, actually. I 100% agree, but my heart is always going to lie with the originals. I have, like you, a very uh, uh, large appreciation for these watches. I think they're beautiful. I think they were so representative of Adam R. Piguet stepping outside their comfort zone for the era. The size for me is perfect. It, it, they're just beautiful watches, and I, and I like all the different variants, whether you could get, uh, like you said, a guilloché dial or an engraved dial. Uh, they're just, there's a lot going on and a lot to love with these watches, and I think, dare I say, still a little bit undervalued for what they are. They're 100% um, undervalued because for a time-only watch, the size of, uh, of this type of case the the step bezel this is really the dna of what a complication but this is more of a romantic complication was back in the day and and for me when you look at this you see all these parts that are that are so hard to maintain and to manufacture so elegantly put together to to really have uh, one of my favorite complications from ap which is the star wheel that's why also, even though the aesthetic isn't mine, right. but the code is, the Starwell code is uh, the best code that they've made. For sure. And uh, as I said, my favorite variation would be white metal with the purple engine turned. Well, they're not purple uh, by design. They were blue by design and they aged purple. We had one that was like the most spectacular one ever. People were losing their minds yes. from the original owner. They had no clue it was purple. They just uh, thought it was just a, a nice star wheel, white metal. But yeah, fantastic, fantastic watches. Uh, congrats on that one. And what do we have last Last but not least? Last but not least. So my brother and I came up with this from, uh, from an auction where we bought it. One of the things that I discovered and liked, all the new generation uh, calibers that came up 24 years ago now from Rolex with Daytona, the majority of the Lume dials, all, which are Luminova, all turned to a cream color. Right. So the Pana is usually for the regular Daytona that all the indices creamed. Mm -hmm. But if you look at this one, it's a dial usually reserved for a different model and all the indices and the hand have a perfect cream aging. Right. So for me, I like these little details because it gives it more of an untouched feel for a watch. And the cool thing is even on the box, you have the little uh, white sticker that, that was like the dial code of, uh, you know, easier to find. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because this is a 1-1 one -one reference, right? Yes. So it's not a tritium dial. It should be a Luminova dial. But it the is. fact that it's still aged to this cream color, it gives, I guess, some people hope that their Luminova dials could at some point age with like, Luminova, a nice tritium color. Super Luminova, but not the chromolites. Okay. Yeah, because those are they those are the blue, right? Yes. So yeah, those probably never. But yeah, people ask me all the time, oh, is my watch going to age like with that nice like creamy color or yellow color patina? And when it's a Luminova dial, I'm like, ah, sorry but you got to buy tritium so for everybody watching out there uh maybe one day you'll get lucky and it'll but age only crazy like this all right they've only been observed on the first generation right. of the uh the one one series of the daytonas right. the later ones from 2004 2005 you don't really see it anymore and as of 2009 i'm pretty sure that it is not it's, not possible right because the chromalite they they greatly improved the stability of the color um, because a lot of brands, this is what they have to, this is what they have to do. They have to go through iterations to be able to better their products. Right. So this is what Rolex has been doing since uh, day one. Yeah. So Small finally... incremental changes yes. to improve over exactly. time. You know, nothing ever really super drastic. <laughs> exactly. Very, very cool watch. Well, thank you so much for sitting down, showing us these watches. You're welcome. As always, remember to follow them on Instagram. Check out their website if you're interested in any of these watches. Send them a message on Instagram or directly through their website. They are all for sale, unless I buy or one and two of them <laughs> before I leave. But thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah.